Hi guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the ChemEd student. In this lesson we're going to take a look at a complete explanation and derivation for Nusselt number and what it actually means in terms of applications for us as chemical engineers. So if we first look at what Nusselt number actually is. Well Nusselt number forms part of a series of dimensionless numbers which is used in chemical engineering. But Nusselt number is used in convective heat transfer analysis. Now in simple terms, Nusselt number is essentially the ratio between the convective and conductive heat transfer within a fluid. Now we can assume that our fluid is considered stationary. So that's, that's key and we'll talk about that when we look at the conditions for what Nusselt number values actually mean. Now we denote Nusselt number with the term NU, but we can also express um, dimensionless values with uh, the term, so you could have the capital N and then you could have NU like so. But either way, Nusselt number is generally um, considered as NU. Now before we look at the, the applications and the correlations, we'll look at the simple derivation based on this ratio between convective and conductive heat transfer. So, as we said before, the Nusselt number can be expressed as Q convection divided by Q conduction. So that's it in its most basic terms. But we can also express this in terms of the conductive and convective resistances. But in most terms, what we consider is in terms of the Q values. But for resistances, we have to invert um, our numerator and denominator when we compare it to the Q value. So notice that in terms of the Q convection and Q conduction is that convection is on the numerator and conduction is on the denominator. But when we talk about resistances, which we look at in more detail in our heat transfer course um, about the resistances, so I'll put a link in the description uh, to that course if you want to check that one out. But essentially, in order for this to, to be valid, we have to invert our conduction and convection. Now, for heat transfer, we can express the Q equations for convection and conduction as follows. So for convection, we know the equation of Q equals HA delta T. And for conduction, we have KA delta T over L. Now, in all these cases, the values or the, the letters have the same definition. So, for example, that is our heat transfer film coefficient, our area, our difference in temperature. We have our thermal conductivity and we have the characteristic length L here. But what we can do is in order to work out the actual uh, formula for Nusselt number, we can substitute in the Q convection and Q conduction into this ratio and cancel out our like terms. So in doing so, we can clearly see that our areas will cancel each other out, which tells us that Nusselt number isn't dependent on the size of the system. So it doesn't matter how big the area is, Nusselt number will be the same. Likewise, it doesn't account for a difference in the temperature. So our delta T's will cancel each other out. Now when we have a fraction divided by a fraction, this L will come up to the top and it will multiply the H. So if we simplify this, then what we will get is our Nusselt value to be HL over K, where H is our convective heat transfer coefficient in watts per meter squared Kelvin, our L is our characteristic length given in meters, and K is our thermal conductivity of our fluid, which is in watts per meter Kelvin. Now what we can do here is to check whether or not this would actually be a dimensionless group. So if we perform this calculation but only using the units, let's see if we do indeed get a, a dimensionless value here. So if we substitute in H, so that would be the watts per meter squared Kelvin, and that's going to times the, the length, which is M, and then we'll divide all that by watts per meter Kelvin. So from here, this M will cancel at the square. So what we end up with is watts per meter Kelvin divided by watt per meter Kelvin. 
So both of these will cancel each other out and we end up with a dimensionless group. So that's how we can make sure that we've got these in the correct order. Now in terms of the applications of Nusselt number, that in most aspects of heat transfer, there are a series of different correlations between different dimensionless numbers. And this depends on the type of the system conditions. So let's consider the correlation for free and forced convection in terms of Nusselt number, because that's probably the, the two key distinctions that we use in terms of expressing Nusselt number as uh, to represent for heat transfer. Now the key distinction between free and forced is in the way the fluid flows over the surface. Because in free convection, there is no measurable velocity, i.e. it is a natural process. Whereas in forced convection, we set a given velocity over fluid. So whether it be air, we can do this through um, you know, a fan, if it was a, a liquid, we could do a pump. So we would fix our given velocity. So we have control over the amount of fluid that passes through our solid. Now this idea poses a significant problem in terms of the correlations. Now, can you guess why that would be the case? In that, why the correlations will be different between free and forced conviction. And it has to do with the fact that we can measure the velocity for forced and we have no measurable velocity for free. But if we consider forced convection first, then the generalized correlation for forced convection is written in the form of Reynolds number as well as Prandtl number. And the way this looks is as follows. So this is a generalized correlation. In that, Nusselt number is equal to C, Reynolds number to the power M, times Prandtl number to the power N. Now, if we break these down into the individual components, then the Reynolds value is given by rho VD over mu, and Prandtl is given by mu CP over K. Now, the Reynolds number takes into account the nature of the fluid flow, i.e. it will determine whether or not we have free, uh, sorry, laminar or turbulent flow. Whereas the Prandtl will give us the ratio between the momentum to the thermal diffusivity. So we can clearly see that in terms of the measurable velocity, this features in the Reynolds number. So if we didn't know or have a measurable velocity, we couldn't use Reynolds number. Now, the values of C, M and N, so that's these values, are found experimentally and are dependent on your given system. But we'll look at actual numerical examples um, in just a second. But in terms of Nusselt number for free convection, then the issue we now face is that we have no fluid velocity. So as we said before, Reynolds number simply cannot be used. Now instead of Reynolds number, we have to use the other dimensionless group known as Grashoff number, because this accounts for the free random motion of the fluid as a function of the average temperature and the opposing gravitational force. Now granted, Grashoff number isn't widely used the same as Reynolds number, but it is one of the dimensionless groups that we should be aware of and know how to derive. But in terms of the relationship between Nussel, Grashoff and Prandtl, it's exactly the same. It's just that when we specify a given system, these values of C, M and N will change. Now, Grashoff number is defined as the length to the power 3 multiplied by the gravitational force, because remember, if we have free convection, then say, for example, here is our plate. Then the air, as it heats up, so heat comes out this way, then the hot air will begin to rise because the density becomes less as it heats up. But in this process, we always have gravity trying to pull the air back down the way, hence why we need to account for the gravitational force. We then include this parameter beta, and then the difference in the temperature between the surface and the surrounding fluid, all divided by the viscosity squared. Now the beta value 
is the reciprocal of the average temperature. And we have this in Kelvin. So this would be 1 over the average temperature. And therefore, we would multiply this by our numerator and divide by the mu squared on our denominator. Now, in terms of the different geometries, uh, the correlations are slightly different. So if we consider a flat plate first, now that's the, the example here that I gave was for a flat plate. So the, we know that it's dependent on the nature of the flow in terms of the correlation that we use for Nusselt number, but it is also dependent on the geometry. So there are a series of the most common and most widely used uh, correlations, but there are other uh, variations of these equations. So just make sure that whatever system you are using, that you select the most appropriate um, correlation to use. And for these ones that we've got, we will give you the the set of conditions in which it is valid for. But if we consider laminar flow on a flat plate, then the correlation that we would use is Nussel is equal to 0 0.664, so that's our C value, Reynolds to the power 0 0.5, which was our M, and Prandtl to the power 0 0.33, that was our N value. So this is a fixed empirical correlation for laminar flow on a flat plate. Now this is valid for any value of Prandtl that's greater than 0 0.6. Whereas for turbulent flow, again we keep the same style in that we have the value of C, the value of M and N. But this time, the value of C becomes 0 0.037 and the value of M becomes 0 0.8. Now this is valid for a Prandtl range between 0 0.6 and 60 and a Reynolds between 5 times 10 to the 5 and 1 times 10 to the power 7. So again, this is highly, highly turbulent flow. Now in terms of for pipes, um, we have a similar scenario in that we will break up a regime between laminar flow and turbulent flow. So if we consider laminar flow first, then if we assume that we have a constant surface temperature, then we can simply say that Nussel, which was HL over K, is equal to 3.66. Now that's really important because rather than having a fixed given correlation, we have a fixed numerical value. So say for example we didn't know what the heat transfer coefficient was, but we knew L and we knew K. Then if we have a, a pipe with laminar flow at a constant surface temperature, we can directly work out the value of H. Likewise, if we have a constant surface heat flux, then it's the same thing, but instead of it being 3.66, it becomes 4.36. Now in terms of turbulent flow, because it is more random, we can't use these um, fixed exact values. So what we can use is we have a dittus bolter equation, and that's given by Nussel is equal to 0 0.023, Reynolds to the power 0 0.8, and Prandtl to the power n. So again, N, there is a list of values of N for your different configurations based on the dittus bolter equation. And this is valid for Reynolds greater than 10,000 and Prandtl between 0 0.6 and 160. And then the other uh, correlation that you can use for turbulent flow in pipes is the Sider-Tate correlation. And that's given by 0 0.027 Reynolds to the power 0 0.8, Prandtl to the 0 0.33, and this time it takes into consideration the ratio between the viscosity of the fluid and the surface viscosity, all to the power 0 0.14. Now again, this is valid for Reynolds greater than 10,000, but it is valid for Prandtl between 0 0.6 and 16,700, so a much bigger range for Prandtl um, in here. But that's the, the key correlations that you would need when solving Nussel number for your heat transfer problems. Now, the last thing that we can look at here is the significance of the Nussel number. Because when we work with dimensionless groups, it's very important to know what the significance of the value actually means. Because this will help us understand the behaviour of our given system. Just like with Reynolds number, there's a criteria between laminar and turbulent flow.
We want to know what the criteria is or the relationship for Nusselt number between convection and conduction. So we know that the ratio between convection and conduction must be a given value. It has to be greater um, or equal to 1. But what does it actually tell us? Well, if Nusselt number is equal to 1, it simply means that the rate of the heat transfer by conduction must be equal to that of the rate of uh, heat transfer by convection. So therefore, what we can say is that the fluid is stationary. Because if the CQ conduction, so C conduct divided by Q convection, say these are exactly the same, 4 divided by 4 is 1. So that means that these values must be exactly the same. Now when Nussel is greater than 1, it simply means that the rate of heat transfer by convection must be greater than that of conduction. So when you work out your value of Nussel, you can then begin to better understand the driving force and the more influential driving force for your system in terms of heat transfer. So now it's time for a competition. Um, in order for you to win £500 every month for an entire year, all you have to do is answer this very simple question. So the question is, what mode of convection has the better heat transfer effects? I.e., is it going to be free or is it going to be forced? A very straightforward heat transfer question. So all you have to do to enter the competition is simply answer the question correctly. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel and that you're also subscribed to our Facebook page because that's where we will announce the winner on the 5th of December. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the idea and concept of Nusselt number. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.